All right, so I'm I'm talking about limits to adsorbed atoms, and um, let me talk about the motivation for this is um, observations at Mercury, where um, with the gamma ray spectrometer they saw um, an enhancement in the northern plains units of both sodium and potassium, and the ratio for sodium. Um, of the northern plains units to the equator was two and a half, and for potassium it was up to ten. So the question was, is the northern excess volatile content adsorbed on the surface, or um, is it, I mean, it could be coal trapped in the grains, or it, it could be indigenous to um, a, a different type of material. And um, so this has obvious applicability to uh, the moon as well. So this is the, um, the gamma ray spectrometer observations of um, potassium. Uh, it was shown um, at LPSC by Saplowski et al. And they have a paper, I believe it's in Trust in JGR. Uh, and they have similar abundances, uh, abundance maps for sodium, although the um, the, the relative abundance in the north to the equator is, is slightly smaller for, for, for sodium. And you can see that the potassium abundance in some regions in the north is enhanced by a factor of 10 over that in the, in the equatorial region. And Poplowski um, speculated that the, the potassium is, is evaporated from the equatorial regions and cold trapped at the north, but they couldn't um, couldn't tell for sure whether um, whether that's true or whether it's a different um, material. And and uh, vis visibly, um, the the northern plains units do appear to be a volcanic plain. So this material could be coming up from below. So. Um, this is this is uh, a work in progress. It's something that we we've done recently. Um, so what we did, we assumed spherical grains, and we assumed close packing. Um, uh, if you do a simple calculation, you can you can uh, show that the volume occupied by the grains in close packing is about seventy one percent. If you do um, a Kepler close Packing calculation, you come up with 74 um, percent. That was shown by Rogers in 1958. Um, but in fact, um, if you uh, do random close packing, um, you can get a volume in the grains from 6% to 65%. So um, we, uh, we're comparing the volume in the grain in the bulk to the surface um, volume. The surface area, and and obviously the the, the volume in the grains um, goes inversely as as d the diameter cubed, and the surface area goes as um, d squared. So, in order to allow for non-sphericity and um, the uh, fractal shapes of of grains on the surface of um, of Mercury and the Moon, we subsume the, the root 2 into a, 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 a scaling factor k. And just um, then, then our fractional volume in the grain boundaries over the grain itself is going to be k pi x, where x is, is our assumed depth of the, the, the um, enhancement uh, to d, the diameter of the grain. And then if nxd is the fraction of x in the bulk, 
And NXS is the fraction of atoms in the, in the boundary or the rem. Um, then the atoms in the boundary um, scale uh, to the atoms in the bulk is Kx over D times NXS over NXV. And this is just um, a picture of a real grain. So that uh, factor K is generally on the order of 10. It can be up to uh, 40 or 50 for real um, grains. Um, so our question is, can the adsorbed portion dominate the fraction in the bulk grains? And if you look at um, expected values of um, the depth of the, the rim to the diameter of the grain, and if, and if you assume um, reasonable values for K, like 8 to 10, then, then you, you get a, a value of about 0.8% uh, in the boundary. So how do you increase this number? How do you get really big values? Well, you can in increase the surface roughness. You can increase the depth of the boundary layer. Or you can increase um, NXS relative to NXV, the, num the, um, the, the, the composition of, of your um, uh, calcium or sodium or, or potassium in the rim. But this is, this is our, our um, belief is that if you get NXS over NXD much larger than one, that leads to diffusion inward. Um, the other thing you can do to increase this value is to decrease the size of the grain. But in order to make D um, really small, then um, and to make uh, the number of atoms in the boundary really large, you have to make the diameter really small. And so if you look at grain rims, and, and this, this uh, figure has already been shown once today, but I think it's applicable. The rim is, uh, for real grains, fairly small. And the, um, the, the two arrows at the top show um, nanophase iron. So, in general, this is what you would be looking at, is a very small um, rim. So our conclusion is that the maximum number of sodium atoms adsorbable in one monolayer is about 2%. Um, but the measured sodium in the northern plains units at Mercury is two and a half times the equatorial value. So you have to have something like 100 monolayers um, to increase to the adsorbed sodium to the point where you would get to this uh, observed value. And we conclude that the excess sodium in the plains unit is probably not adsorbed on the grain surfaces. That said, um, it, could, it could have been coal trapped and diffused into the grain, or it could be indigenous to um, the northern plains units. And, and that's it. We're waiting for questions. Let's see. I think there's a question coming up. <laughs> Lots of people are typing. That's good. Yeah, multiple attendees are typing. <laughs> okay. I think we need to figure out some music to play during this time while people are typing. You know, like that Jeopardy, Jeopardy music. <laughs> Right. Right. <laughs> if, if one assumes that the surface area at Mercury is the same as that in the moon, how, will, how would your calculations compare to the value of 0.6 uh, meters squared per gram measured by damages and all in the 1970s? Um, I, I think that it's, it's, it's uh, comparable. Okay. okay, I think another couple are coming up here.
Um, in the interim, briefly, um, Michael Poston, do you want to test your mic? He's our I think he's working now. Okay. So Carl Schmidt asks, can adsorption have an effect, uh, the concentration at depth over geological time scales? Well, I think that what we are, our conclusion is that um, if, um, if the temperature is high enough, and it is obviously temperature dependent, then you're going to have diffusion into the grains. Um, so, I mean, there, there are a lot of, a lot of uh, 